Well, hello there and welcome to Mind Your Business. I'm Jennifer Anderson, host of the show. I'm also the executive director of the Georgina Chamber of Commerce, who, along with Rogers TV Georgina, has created the show for businesses and about businesses. So over the last few weeks, obviously, things have been changing. We're taping this show on June 22nd. So we are now officially, Georgina is in phase two, uh, but so many things have been changing and the uh, Georgina Chamber of Commerce really has been amplifying their Shop Local campaign. On June 11th, the town of Georgina proclaimed uh, the day as Shop Local Georgina Day, not just for that day, not just for 2020, but every June 11th um, in the future. And the reason for that, June 11th, is the Chamber's birthday. It was 45 years old, uh, and we celebrated that 45th anniversary with a kickoff of the Shop Local campaign. We're continuing that Shop, Shop Local campaign over the next few weeks and months, and it really is important for us to spread the word about local businesses. I know you drive by businesses all the time and, and see them and know that they are local, but we really want to showcase all of the businesses in Georgina, all of the organizations that exist and let people know that there are options, there are opportunities, there are great finds in the town of Georgina, and we really want to showcase what our businesses and organizations have to offer. I have a great lineup of ladies on the show with me today, uh, all business owners, all um, in charge of organizations and businesses, and we really want to delve into what they do in our community and why it's so important for you to get to know them. Uh, the first is not only the executive director of the Jericho Youth Services Organization, but she's also the chair of the Georgina Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to welcome Susan Gorman. Hi, Susan. Good morning, Jen. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being a part of the show. I, I really want to showcase because I know uh, we as staff at the Chamber are very proud of the Shop Local campaign. And I know as uh, a member of our board of directors and also the chair of our board, you are also very proud of it as well. I certainly am. I think shopping local is, uh, is really important, especially right now with the, uh, with the times that we're in. You know, during a pandemic, uh, consumers are pinching pennies and eliminating most luxuries. So cutting back on extras, um, more prudent spending and budgeting. So I think it's, uh, it's, you know, injecting a degree of caution into the financial, into their financial habits. Um, in this environment, smaller local businesses count on your patronage to, uh, in order to stay afloat. Um, so when deciding to spend your dollars, um, you know, I think it's, it's important to look and stay local. I agree. I agree. And certainly, you know, as an organization, um, it's important for people to be aware of uh, who is in their community and how they can support local organizations as much as they are shopping in businesses. Absolutely, uh, especially for Jericho, you know, we are a not-for-profit. We do lots of uh, fundraising and events, and uh, we rely heavily on uh, local businesses and organizations to donate, which they happily do, uh, not just to Jericho, but to many, many organizations. So it's always nice at uh, this time to remember that and to, uh, and to give back to them. It's, it's interesting that you mentioned that because, uh, and I know that you know, uh, we've launched the Shop Local Georgina uh, website and it's a part of, of the Chamber's website. And one of the things that we have on that website is 13 reasons why people should shop local. One of the reasons is because when businesses do better, they donate to local organizations. And I know for different events, for things that are happening, you rely on local businesses and, and that partnership. So it, it really is that ripple effect of helping organizations in our community. For sure, absolutely. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Jericho because uh, I know certainly over the last few weeks uh, and months, <laughs> things have changed. <laughs> You have, uh, the buzzword is always pivot for, for this, uh, but you have certainly pivoted your organization to uh, meet the needs of the community. We certainly have. Um, so as you know, we, we provide after school programs and rec programs for the children. And uh, once the pandemic hit, just, uh, just shy of March break, uh, the kids never went back to school and therefore we didn't either. Um, 
unfortunately we had to lay off most of our, our staff, uh, but our head office staff have been working diligently on, you know, the pivot. We've been doing online uh, programs for our kids, checking in with the families. Uh, we have our fun and food bags that we deliver to some um, needier families. So that's been helpful. We've done a couple of uh, parent check-ins online. And so that's worked out well. It wasn't so great the first, but it's, uh, it's getting some momentum. So that's been nice. Right. Yeah. And now that we're in stage two, um, we are, have been, we're part of the daycares and day camps that can open. And so our staff have been working diligently over the last, uh, three, four weeks on, uh, with the, uh, Ministry of Health and York Region Health and putting all the protocols in place to, uh, to get summer camp up and running. Right. And you, like so many other businesses and, and organizations, just watch for the updates. Because That's what we do every changing. day, every day at 11 and 1. <laughs> we're always seeing uh, what's new and, and things are changing daily. Yeah. Um, you know, and it certainly is, if we could just have that crystal ball, <laughs> be able to see the future because as much as it's changing for the summer, it's also, you know, things are so up in the air for the fall as well and for going back to school and all of those things. So it, it really is hard to navigate. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of the uh, new programs that we're working on is a virtual after school program. Uh, like everyone else, we're hoping that uh, it's safe enough for the kids to go back in September. Uh, probably we won't go maybe September, so we might start October. So in that interim, we're hoping that we can still, uh, you know, help the families keep the kids occupied. Right. Obviously for those old enough, you know, we're not, uh, we're not saying leave your six to nine year olds at home for us to look after, but. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. A whole new way. A whole new way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate the update. I appreciate that you are on the show with us uh, today. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we have somebody who, uh, you know, is no stranger to how uh, the last few weeks and months have changed for businesses, especially when it comes to events. Um, Emmy is joining us from All Reasons Party Rentals. Hi, Emmy. Hi, Jen. How are you? Good. Thank you for being here. Uh, you, are, you are in the office today. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what All Reasons Party Rentals is, first of all. So we are a um, party rental business. We rent uh, dishware, glassware, tables, chairs, linens, tents, basically anything you need for a party. And then if we don't have it, we will uh, find someone that does. So we'd like to be a one-stop shop for you and point you in the right direction if we can't help you. And we also do balloon orders. A lot of people probably don't know that, but uh, if you need balloons, I know these days with the parades and all that, people are, you know, getting balloons to put on lawn. So we do do that as well. Very good. Uh, and that's something you've always done, not, yes. Um, yes. not since exactly. everything has, has exactly. changed. Exactly. Yes. Um, it, it certainly has changed in 2020. Uh, events that we thought were happening, including a lot of weddings, have been uh, postponed, have been changed. Um, you certainly, as a, a party rental business, would feel the effects of that. Sure. I mean, this is when we are at our busiest. Uh, basically, our season starts pretty well from April until Christmas. Um, obviously, we do a lot more outdoor events this time of year. We would be, it would be crazy right here if we were open, but you know, we aren't, we are open. A store is not open, but you can call if you wanted to get rentals. We've had, I mean, this weekend, we had a couple of small rentals for like a table and 10 chairs, you know? So um, yeah, so it's very quiet now. Right, not 11 chairs, not 12, we're not, <laughs> we're not allowed to do that yet. Yeah. <laughs> <Ten I'm chair. laughs> yes. But this was the first weekend, really prior to that, nothing, just a few balloon orders and yeah. Right. Um, 2020, from what I understand, was a, a very big wedding year. Everybody wanted to be getting married in the, the year 2020. Um, so how have you kind of adapted? Because I'm sure there were, um, were there cancellations? Were there just postponements? What are you seeing within your business? 
Um, so, tip, so we had a lot of uh, bookings uh, prior till this all happened. Uh, we would start. We would continue to book in April, May for events this year. So, anyone that did book prior to this, majority of them, I would say, ninety five percent have moved to next year, and the other five percent have just cancelled and just done some smaller intimate gatherings, or will be doing smaller intimate intimate gatherings. So we did anticipate that this year was going to be a big year uh, for weddings because we were booking really early. Um, so next year, it's going to be busy with all the 2020 events, plus people that are going to get married in 21. So I anticipate, I'm hoping next year will be very, very busy. Right. <laughs> Yeah, well, everybody, you know, assumed 2020 was the big year. I bet you had no idea that 2021 <laughs> would Who be. Who could have predicted? Who could have predicted? Yeah. Uh, and, and from what I understand, too, because people from 2020 are now booking in 2021, we are going to see those events on days that are a little bit more unconventional, that there might be weddings on a Wednesday or, you know, events that are happening through the week, bigger events just to make up for all of the loss in 2020. Yeah, because I mean, a lot of weekends will be fully booked and there won't be many options, um, not just for us, but for halls as well. So instead of choosing your date, it may be chosen for you, really. Right. Well, yeah. And, uh, I also would think that, you know, for everybody, life goes on. There are still engagements that are happening right now. There are still things um, that are being planned for 2021 and 2022. So, you know, while we're seeing that disruption right now, you will see some of those new events come into your business for the future. Yes, definitely. And we still have people holding out for 2020 as well. Even, you know, I've had a lot of people contact me hoping that then it will be, you know, they'll be able to have larger events, maybe up to 50 people, like in the fall. So we still have people holding out for that. Um, and we do have tents with heaters. So people want to, when it's a bit colder, people might start rather than doing the summertime, moving it to fall, you know, even closer to the winter time just to get their wedding or their events done basically right yeah so I am I'm a Keswick resident and uh, the chamber is in Sutton so every day when I head to work I drive by your location um, and on baseline and you know when I go by your sign is one of my favorites and I'm paraphrasing now because it it says something along the lines of you know when you're ready to party again give us a call <laughs> Yeah. It really speaks to not only your business, but businesses that, hey, mm -hmm. hey, we're here, right? Don't, don't forget about us. Exactly. And I mean, we anticipate that when this is all said and done, people are going to want to party and we will be here for you when right. you decide to go ahead with it. I love that. I can't wait to party with you. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> until okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for, for being you. here with us today. Uh, I love having you here. Uh, Jacintha is also here with us. And Jacintha, you are a holistic practitioner and a freelance floral designer. So two very different businesses. And I would love to hear about it. Hi, Jacintha. Hi, uh, Jennifer. Thank you for including me and inviting me as well. I'm so grateful to be here. Well, I love I love having you here. You're a home-based business and it really is, you know, we want to make sure that everybody is represented in our shop local campaign. And just because you don't see the sign on the side of the road doesn't mean that you aren't a business that's flourishing in this community. So tell us a little bit about your business. Um, I, I moved to Keswick about three years ago and started the, uh, my holistic practice here, uh, home base after having the healing room constructed about a year and a half ago. And um, in the meantime, I was doing my floral design to supplement um, my income to, before my business can be uh, properly set up. Um, during this pandemic season, or we're still in pandemic uh, time, it's been hit hard, both business both, uh, you know, with the event industry being totally shut down and social and physical distancing. So um, I have actually tried to offer the um, 
distant healing uh, services, which I have managed to do a few, as a lot of people are not yet uh, comfortable or aware of how distant healing work. So um, I just got my website uh, launched during this time that uh, I had a lot of time to try to prepare to put my business together. Um, so you uh, you just launched your website, um, and it has all of the information. I, I it looks great. Uh, Thank you. I was I was perusing and I was looking through the pages. Uh, it looks great, and it has a lot of information about your practices and and what Reiki is, what some of the uh, services that you provide. Yes. Um, aside from that, I have just basically used this um, time to. Um, work on giving back to the community, as I don't know if any, any one of you have seen my uh, page on uh, Facebook. I've been basically preparing, making, uh, sewing, uh, sleeping bags for the homeless. Um, they in on in from the cold, I think. So this way, I'm just totally not concerned about the impact that the pandemic uh, and, the, and the virus is causing our economy. So, you know, right. just try to stay positive and get back. I think, you know, that certainly is part of the battle and it's part of, you know, uh, being positive and, and having a positive frame. Yeah, I felt like I was working more longer hours than I did when I was going out working. <laughs> Uh, well, I think a lot of people feel that way, it's, you know. But it's been great. It's been great. And uh, as you know, I have written a book and it's just uh, been published and I'm hoping for the event um, to start again so I can have my book launch. Right. So I love that because you just you just kind of casually mentioned that you've written a book, you know. It's uh, in, in your spare time as, as much as you've been working a lot and you've been giving back. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about Take Charge. What's it about? Um, Take Charge is about how to overcome fears and face challenges and not let any, um, any life challenges bring you down. So just keep going forward and um, to stay positive and be confident. Um, it's, it sounds like it's a wonderful book for right now. <laughs> a great yeah. reminder for you know any time, but especially right now, people need. Yes, that. actually, I was uh, I was asked by um, some friends and clients, how am I dealing with the pandemic uh, situation? How has it affected me? And to me, I just feel like it really didn't affect me. I know it has affected me uh, professionally, but I didn't even feel that, I didn't allow it to affect me. So uh, rather than worrying about the whole uh, negative uh, impact that is placing on us or on even me or my business, I just felt that, okay, I have this lost time and this is a time I can utilize to do a lot of the volunteer work that I've been wanting to do. Mm -hmm. So that's basically it. I feel like I've gone through worst uh, situation in life, which is uh, talked about in uh, my book, right. to how to overcome everything that life throws at you. Yeah. And so to me, this was really nothing. Very good. I love that. I love that uh, we can end our conversation with that, that positive vibe. So thank you so much you. for being here with us. For having me. Uh, and finally, we have Wendy Sidor who's joining us. Uh, Wendy is also a positive light that uh, hopefully vacations are in our very near future. Hi, Wendy. Morning. Thank you for being here. Tell us a little bit about Travel Only with Wendy. I am a home-based agent um, for a couple years now. So I hope everyone's seen me around town now that my car is wrapped, but- It is wrapped. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's wrapped. Yeah, you can't really miss me. <laughs> yes. But yeah, uh, definitely a tough few months in travel. Um, long hours, working for nothing, rescheduling people, trying to calm them down. I mean, I've had my vacation canceled as well but um 
I just keep, things are changing so quickly. I have to review a couple times a week with all the suppliers, see what their terms are today and go back to my, my clients and just try and get them, you know, what's best for them, whether that's a voucher or a refund, not a lot of refunds. Um, but again, that's in the supplier's hands and I just have to keep going over and over and doing what I can for them. I've been spending a ton of time doing uh, training, getting certifications, mm -hmm. just trying to use the time as best as I can. Right. So the thing with the sector that you are in is you're dealing with a few different stages. You're dealing with um, bookings that aren't necessarily happening right now because things have been canceled. You're dealing with people who were supposed to be traveling and have their fingers crossed yeah. <laughs> hoping that they would. And now those are being postponed. And then you're also dealing with people who are interested in booking um, yeah. for the future. So there's a lot, there's a lot that you're juggling. Yeah. The, the bright light, I guess, is people are now starting to book. It's not tomorrow. It's not next week. But um, like cruise lines specifically right now have just amazing deals. They want to get people back. And that could be still 21, 22, whenever you're ready to go back. But I think to take advantage of those, you know, jump on it now. The other suppliers like all inclusives or whether it be a, you know, a, a tour group, they're really being generous and allowing, you know, no fee cancellation or changes at the last minute. They want people to be comfortable because it's a vacation. Right. You should not be stressed that you have to go or lose your money and you're not gonna be safe. You don't feel safe. Yeah. So they're being very generous right now. We were talking before the show began and you are actually looking at booking uh, mm -hmm. a trip in the next few months for yourself. Yeah. Hopefully get it booked today or tomorrow, uh, looking the end of September, beginning of October. So I have two sides of people and one, are you crazy? That's a second wave. You're not going to be able to go. Are you nuts? The other is like, can I go with you? <laughs> so again, I think you have to do what's best for you if you're comfortable. My point of view is I'm already the person that's wiping down the tray in the airplane and the remote in the room. I don't care if I'm at a five star. It doesn't matter. That's just, I'm kind of crazy. So I think I just have to go for myself and see. And I, I do have confidence that the suppliers, whether it be, you know, the airplane or the resort or the tour companies, they're going to do every single thing they can to get your confidence and make things right. So I'm going with an open mind, but I still understand that the responsibility is mine to take care of myself and be right. safe. So, yeah. You are seeing other people who feel that way and that are booking just like yeah. you are. Yes. And there's no right or wrong. Like if, if you don't want to go until there's a vaccine, you're right. If you want to go on the first plane, you're right. It's your comfort zone. Right. Mm -hmm. There are currently flights. People are taking um, trips. Uh, are you seeing a lot of that? Is it more essential travel more than vacation? Yeah, a little bit more within Canada, like we spoke about, um, people, you know, getting out west to see their family, they can't really get into the provinces down east just yet. But um, I know that's one thing people are really saying domestic travel will return first, and they're trying to, you know, do all these in Canada vacations. I'm not promoting them just yet. Because in my head, it's June. You're going to want to go vacation July or August. And until I know the provinces are open and you don't have to quarantine, that's just not a vacation to me. If anyone comes to me, absolutely, I'll look into it and give them the latest details. But I think we just have to wait and see. Right. It, mm -hmm. That's what it comes down to. I think, with you know, that wait and see game to see what's going to happen. I have a couple people uh, have used their vouchers and already rebooked for the end of this year so again when they rebook the suppliers have their generous terms of conditions that you know you're not comfortable 40 or 20 days out or it, they're really crazy times you can just lift it and put it somewhere else for no fee so it's a good deal right and and you say good deal you are seeing those great prices that incentive is there for people to begin travel when they feel safe to do so I don't see um, like, you know, crazy deals except for me when I'm booking, but um, <laughs> on the all inclusives per se, I do see them, the cruises right now, 
you know, free air, free booze, free internet, free this, free that. It's, it's crazy. So I have a cruise booked in November. Um, I'll be booking a group probably the end of February. And I'll do that before the end of this week to take advantage of a lot of the promotions right now. But um, yeah, I don't know. You just, whatever you want to do, there's, there is a way out there and they are, they are really trying to get people back, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. One one last question, and it's, you know, if I were to sit down and start to look at travel options and plans and, you know, it's just like deciphering all of the daily press releases and the changes, yeah. um, I, I would be lost. That's why it's so important to talk to somebody like you who mm -hmm. is able to decipher some of that information. Well, I know people... Um have historically booked themselves online with the larger sites and I used to do that too. Now, I hope this has shown people the value. You know, my clients just had to call me and I'm the one wading through it. I'm the one updating them. I'm the one jumping on the opening of the good condition to cancel or reschedule. Um, but this is an example. So Mexico is open and like I'm talking about the Riviera Maya, they're flying to Cancun, but not all there's four different areas from Cancun down to say like Tulum, the ruins area. The bottom two, they're open. You can fly there and go to the resorts. But as of last week, their pools and the beaches weren't open. Hmm. So if you're online seeing this fantastic deal for Akumal and you book, you're out of luck when you get there. <laughs> Can like, you I don't know if they're gonna tell you that. I haven't really looked into it, but I don't know if they're going to tell you that. <laughs> but that's why I read a hundred plus emails a day and just devour all the information I can. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's perfect. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Um, I love doing shows like this and, and this is actually our 13th show of Mind Your Business. Love being able to talk to businesses in the community and now more than ever as we've done the last three shows and next show is the same, talking to businesses about what they're doing, how the pandemic is currently affecting them and uh, you know how it's going to be back to business in just a a few more weeks, days, weeks, and months, hopefully. Um, so I want to thank everybody for being a part of the show. Um, you can catch the show on Rogers TV, Georgina, on Channel 10. Take a look at Rogers TV website for information about the times that the show airs. As well, you can also catch all of the episodes on the Rogers TV YouTube channel and on the GeorginaChamber.com website. So we encourage you to head there and not only take a look at past episodes, but also information about our shop local campaign on behalf of everyone at the georgina chamber of commerce I want to thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time on mind your business